and a handful of states and cities have mandated that shoppers wear face coverings in grocery stores and other public places as they try to contain the spread of COVID-19. The, the question is, what happens when shoppers refuse to wear masks? Can they be denied service? Well, let's find out from our uh, legal expert, our legal correspondent, uh, Dr. Laura McNeil is with us. And uh, what say you? Walk us through the process. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. So um, the answer to your question is yes, shoppers can be refused service in a store for not following the mandates that either a store or a state has initiated to wear masks. And that's for two reasons. One, uh, anytime the presence of an in individual in a business or store jeopardizes the safety and welfare of themselves or others, they can be refused service. And similar to, as we've seen, many stores have a, a short and shoe policy and they say if you don't wear a short shirt and shoes in the store you can be denied service so it's the same thing as long as it's applied across the board and they're not targeting african americans or members of the lgbtqi community they can definitely refuse you service so what about the legal consequences for refusing to wear a mask they can be pretty steep, to be quite honest. It really depends on what state you live in. So for instance, when New York passed its public mandate requiring masks in public spaces, they did not include criminal or civil charges with that, or penalties rather. Whereas if you're in, for instance, Laredo, Texas, it's a very different story. If you're found in Laredo, Texas, not wearing a mask in public, you'll be charged with a class C misdemeanor and a fine of up to $1,000. So it's very important for you to look and see what your state's policy is so that you can adhere to that and not and avoid those penalties. Now, let me flip the script a little bit here, Dr. Laura. What if you are an employee in the store and you decide that you don't want to wear a mask. Is there anything legally that can be done about that? Uh, yes, essentially you can be fired by your employer because the employer is responsible for maintaining a self, excuse me, a safe work environment based on OSHA. That's the Occupational Safety and Health Act. So in, essentially the employer has to ensure that the employee is working under safe conditions. And if wearing a mask is in opposition of that, they can be either disciplined or fired. So employees, it's very important that they do follow any mask mandates by their employers. And what about customers? Is there anything that stores can do to encourage their customers to wear those masks? Yes, I think it's important for stores to do um, a couple of things. Number one, signage is so very important. Put signs in the front of your stores and your windows, making sure you communicate to the public about your mask policy. In addition, I think it's important to encourage public-private partnerships with your local police enforcement and say, you know, can you stop by our store periodically and do sweeps, just encouraging customers to comply with our policy because, again, we're trying to promote uh, public health efforts. And also, one, one final thing, we've seen people who have been literally, black people in particular, who've been escorted out of stores, coming in with a mask on because they've been profiled. I know that if I walk in with a bandana on, I've gotten the side eye myself a couple of times. Uh, what about that type of harassment? Is there anything people can do? Yes, um, and I'm very concerned about that. I have two, uh, actually four African-American brothers. Obviously, I'm African-American, and I'm always so concerned when they go to the grocery stores to buy food for their families that they're going to be racially profiled. If someone feels like they've been racially profiled, they would need to contact uh, a lawyer um, the, in, to file essentially an anti-discrimination claim, a Title VII claim. If you just call any attorneys, there, there are a lot of attorneys that will take those types of discrimination cases pro bono, meaning there's no charge to you. And I think it's so very important that we as African Americans speak up when we feel that type of discrimination is happening. All right, very good uh, legal advice. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Laura McNeil. Thank you. Good night.